Yes, well, I'm going to ask um, the CEO to, to just comment on that one. Thank you. I, d I just think we need to be clear about what this risk is, mm. it's, and it's as risk as an investment. That's, that's where it's framed. It's not, not to do with the political issues. Right, OK. Got that one. Issue six, does, as, does the sorry, Chief do Executive... Sorry, do you want to ask a question yes, again? Yes, sorry, does the Chief Councilor Executive well? think that we need to address that particular risk elsewhere or just ignore it altogether? Well, uh, it's a, it's a, it's, that's a big question, Ms. Reed. It's, uh, it's in your hands as councillors and elected members to determine what risk assessment you want around political risk, not ours, um, per se. Um, Can I suggest, actually, that, that issue five already covers that? I think that that would be my feeling. In issue five, our investment portfolio, which we've just gone yeah. through, that effectively is, is that issue, isn't it? Yeah. And this is a more specific one that doesn't include the political. We're now, we're now looking at other issues there. Does issue five include political risk? It simply is the risk of it not being effectively managed to maximise mm -hmm. both long-term financial returns and economic development. That would be my suggestion. But that's already included. Right, let's move on. Item, issue 6B, leasehold land portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. Question, comment? No? Happy with that? Okay. Issue 6C, regional forestry investments. No? Oh. Councillor Rose. I suppose, Madam Chair, that you know the big risk is, of course, that the carbon market stays depressed, mm. um, and whether we need to enumerate that in the in the narrative, I was it self-explanatory within the narrative. I mean, that is that is the overall risk, is it not? Yes, it is, it is mentioned. Mm. If you don't change this, mm. in 2012. So the chief is quite happy that that covers, the, covers yes, that yes, element yes, of risk? Yes, I am. I am, actually. Um, and I would note the council's exposure here is pretty modest, really, overall, because yep. of the action we've taken. That paragraph covers it. Yep. All right, Councillor Rose. Any other? Councillor Scott. I did make a note of this under the forestry, and I think more appropriately I should have um, referred to it under uh, water quality because the, this particular risk is around investment, not around what it delivers. Mm -hmm. So if I could actually pick up my comments with your indulgence, Madam Chair, and refer it back to, to water quality, uh, where we note under that risk that the um, forestation project is on hold, um, can I question whether we're providing any form of um, support in the way of farm plans, et cetera, to actually encourage farmers into investing in forestry anyway for its wood values um, as a means to um, gain a better productive land use and get catchment improvements. Right, yeah, I'd suggest that's probably more relevant to issue three, uh, but I'm happy to consider just well, how, yep, how yep. wording we <laughs> yeah. can word around that, but mm. I, I do agree that... Um, you know, there is still a risk, significant risks yep. around losing soil, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if we if we could note that and, and address that, I think, Madam Chair, we might have a paper coming to us sometime on alternatives to going ahead with the uh, forestation according to its financial returns on the carbon, have we not? Yes, probably, well, very late this year, early next year. Yeah. So we are we are addressing that issue. So it'd be good to keep a note of it and see, you know, how we're responding to it. Sorry to. So to you're, you're happy to leave it with staff. I'm to happy see to see it, it fit in either Some one or three yeah. along that line. Yeah. <coughs> right. No one else on six C. Issue seven: natural hazards. No. Nope. Issue eight: regional council functions. No. 
Did someone say, hmm? Yeah. Yes, Councillor Gilbertson. <laughs> Just the, the tone, if this is the right one I'm thinking about. This is issue eight you're talking about. Is it? Yeah. The, yes. The, the tone's almost sort of... Um, the, yeah, I'm just a bit slightly uncomfortable with the tone that sort of says we must be preserved at all costs. It sort of just to me, a wee bit says. Where does it say that? The tone, the vibe. <coughs> I was reading it before. The local government reform results in significantly reduced commitment. Yeah, no, no, I'll shut up. You shut up, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't dare say that. Just repeating what you said. Uh, risk issue nine. <laughs> Councillor Ramsvall. Uh, this risk issue uh, mentions the Parliamentary Commission, the report on um, hydraulic fracturing. Um, but it doesn't really give a precautionary approach. It, it says that the mitigation is um, <coughs> awaiting the outcome of the final report. Yeah, and this is nine, isn't it? So, um, in the meantime, what protection is there of um, our aquifers from the, from the risk of pollution um, in the meantime if, um, if fracking goes ahead prior to that final report coming out? Yes, uh, Mr Newman. My understanding is the... Is the uh, um, well, firstly, there's no active exploration. Uh, sorry, no, that may not be correct. In, in Northern, Northern Hawks Bay, there may be. Um, but I'm unaware of any consent applications we've had for any um, exploration at this point. That's the first point. Um, inside the regional boundary. And the second point is my understanding is, is that, is that uh, in the permitting process, there's been an explicit identification of aquifers, uh, both Teratonga and Ruatanava, uh, and and the Crown's view is that those, those are out of the scope of permits. Thank you. Thank you. North area. That's Wairau. Yeah, and, and also um, not, not as far as, as Wairau, there's other um, permits just north of Napier here that... Oh, I, um, can't that I, I don't, to be fair, Council, I don't have that level of detail. Um, I'd be aware if there was a particular exploration process and a consent process on the way, obviously, but there aren't. I'm not aware of. Because uh, I understand that there, and Mr Wilson well, may be moment, able to Ms. help Ms. us Lambert, with that. Ms Lambert will be able to um, confirm further. <coughs> At the moment, I mean, there's been um, permits issued as part of the bulk, a block offer by the Ministry for investigations but that is different to this risk here, which is around our planning framework response to that. And as the Chief Executive has explained, we have had no um, applications for resource consents to date. And we have provisions in place in the current uh, resource plans um, to address any potential aquifer contamination from whatever drilling activity occurs and um, the issue that we're, we're putting in here and why this is an issue for council is to ensure that our planning framework remains current and adaptable to any new technologies that, are that may come through so this is why it is identified as a potential risk for council but um, the statement here is that we are monitoring what's going on at a national level because uh, this council has always indicated to the government that hydraulic fracturing is not unique to Hawke's Bay or the potential for it. It's, it's na a national issue. Hence the uh, Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment, the first part of her report, and now she's working on the second part. So we know that that is a potential risk and that's why it's identified in here. In the meantime, we, we're not aware of any applications that are going to come into us for it, and we believe that our planning, current planning framework uh, through resource consent processes has the ability to address the issues that may be of concern. Thank you. Right, Just further, further, further up, um, supplementary, Madam Chair, and um, I, I don't know if Mr Wilson is about yep. to make a comment or not. 
Well, I d so I didn't catch him. I'll put him down as the next one. Okay, yeah. Councillor um, Amersbell, Mr the Wilson, anybody else? Uh, just um, to clarify the fact that we ha haven't had an application relevant to this on our desk today doesn't mean that the one can't arrive tomorrow. And um, I'm interested in, in exactly what kind of um, protection there is well, um, can, I, can I suggest, already. Councillor Rim as well, with due respect, this is, this is relating to what's in the Resource Management Act and what's in our current plans, you're asking. Can I yeah. suggest you take some time later to talk with, with uh, Ms Lambert or, or one of the other officers who has that knowledge? Which, I mean, you, you will have the knowledge yourself because you do have copies of the plan. But would that be all right, Ms Lambert? Because it's a, just that's a detail you're asking about rather than this actual risk issue that we're dealing yep. with today. So may I suggest well, that? Well, I, I guess I just was yes. wanting that to be... Um, you, you want know, to clarify it's, it's that it's acknowledged here, and I was, in terms of mitigation, act, I think it would be useful if we could be assured that, there were, that the protection will be in place. Um, and well, yeah, I'd, love it, I'd love to have a direct reference yes, to that. Yes, you've just been you. assured by, by staff uh, that the, the Resource Management Act and the plan are in place so you, you can then get more detail as a result of that. Is there anybody else on um, risk issue number nine? Can't Mr Wilson? <coughs> Just in terms of, uh, of uh, fracking, I mean, there are permits that, been, that have been issued, uh, in particular in our area, Manahari, we, uh, is also involves Kaweka as well, uh, and, and quite a few other sites. Um, we have a concern in terms of the fracking issue, uh, and I guess uh, in terms of the council in regards to uh, mitigation around that uh, and, and by way of the resource consent process uh, is observation uh, and it's good to hear there hasn't been any consent done at this stage uh, just observation in terms of what happens in the process that's going to go through that's that's where we're really yes, interested. I, I'd understood that Māori committee were given some information on that but there may not have been so I guess it's up to staff to do that. Just clarify once again th those consents you referred to are the ministry ones not the regional council ones. Yep. Yes, yep. I think yes. it's important. Concessions. Yes, they're concessions. Mm. Yes, concessions, sorry. Yep. Right, so I mean, staff have all that information for you, Mr. Wilson, if you want it. Okay. It's been, I know it's been spoken of several times in the last two or three years. Right, risk issue 10. Madam Chair. Yes. Sorry, I'll Councillor I'll just point Dick. out that on the spreadsheet, the identification numbers are around the wrong way on uh, 8 and 9. Oh. I'll pick that up and yes. I'll also change the date at the top would you mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. before you Sorry, raise that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, thank you for that, um, Councillor Dick. Right, issue risk issue ten, operational risks. Any questions or comments on that? No? Anybody wish to just make any further co comment about the risk register? And perhaps, Councillor Rim, as well, this would be the time for you to raise the issue you raised before. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, um, <coughs> we've got at number 11, Council, of, Council fails to recognise climate change. Um, and I think this also refers to um, number 7, um, major natural hazard events, because um, flooding comes under major natural hazards. and. Um, as Mr Aidy has told us in the past, as far as climate change is going, it means an increase in extreme weather events, um, including flooding and drought, of course. So, and, and we've just come through summer with a very severe drought, um, which, which can be um, linked to climate change. So, and it's costing our region dearly um, to the... Um, you know, many, many um, millions, tens, hundreds of millions me, of dollars. Excuse me, can you just, just, so just confirm what it is you want? You're asking for, for, I'm, for it to be raised I, in I the list or something? I think that climate change should be um, raised much higher because it's going to be an ongoing it, and so a severe it, it's risk. It's listed as, as number 11 at the moment. Yeah. Or are you suggesting perhaps it be part of number 7? I don't know, perhaps I'll leave it to staff to... Can I make a suggestion perhaps that, that might help with this? Is that... Is that um, uh, <coughs> climate change does impact on a number of the mm -hmm. risk issues, and you could argue the number of the um, number of the interventions that we have underway are in part response to climate change. Um, mm -hmm. But I think maybe, team, we could be a wee bit more explicit across each, each of the risk categories, whether it's natural hazards, 
regional forestry investments, which was in part a response to climate change. Um, similarly, um, water quantity, all those mm. issues. And the investment. That, that, that least be explicit about where where the climate change theme is relevant to that particular risk, because that, that, that's been more explicit. Or, or okay. I'm suggesting just put up um, climate change as, as a, a risk much higher up. Right, well, staff will certainly um, take some of that on board and see what yep. they can come up yep. with. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, Councillor Dick. Um, I would have come in earlier, but I got mixed up with those numbers. Um, I believe in terms of the residual risk consequence of item 8, it's local government reform results in significantly reduced commitment to regional council functions, that the... Um, uh, stakeholder reputation and operational capability are scored too low. I believe that stakeholder reputation should be two rather than three, and operational capability, most importantly, should be one rather than three. Sorry, would you just repeat that again? I've now got it in front of me. So, local government reform, which says nine here, but it's actually eight. Eight, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're suggesting under the risk consequences, you're suggesting what? Um well, I believe that um, the stakeholder reputation scoring is, um, is uh, underrated. Right, so it says it level two. It should be two. two rather than three. And the operational capability, the co consequence is, is the most severe, potentially the most severe, and therefore sh it should be rated as one rather than three. Right, have you got that? Yes. Does that seem... Yeah, that's under residual yeah. risk. Yeah. Yeah. Now okay. we'll push it that down. It still leaves it red flagged, but mm. I think yes. the score should yeah. go up a bit. should go up under well, we'll the residual 3, risk consequences. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you, Councillor Dick. Mm. Would someone yeah. like to move the recommendation? Yeah. Councillor Emmersbach. The issue of um, the potential with cadmium poisoning, and um, come back to us with some information about that because it's it um, it, um, it, it has the potential to um, <coughs> contaminate soil and also food, and uh, I think it's um, something we need to be look into. Can, can Please. Action item. Action item. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, Councillor there Rose. was a report done on that not so long ago, yes. so uh, that may just simply need to be updated. Be repeated, yeah. yes. There was a report to the Council on that. Right, okay, would someone like to move the recommendation? Councillor Scott, <coughs> seconder? <coughs> Sorry, Councillor Dick? Uh, as, amended. as amended, yes. Sure. You have to do it, okay. Would you like to speak, Councillor Scott? Yes, Madam Chair, it's always good to have this item uh, in front of us, but uh, perhaps I'm going to ask um, through debate that the um, staff consider a more thorough um, introductory um, program, a supporting paper of this, because it's not just a case of identifying the risk and agreeing that these are the risks. We need information about, about the performance of it and how it's being monitored. So I just think that we need to step up a, a level with um, this risk uh, register and not only keep it up to date and um, in terms of what we can see but how we monitor it. So that I am suggesting we proceed with. Councillor Scott, Councillor Dick, do you wish to speak? Um, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd just like to confirm my view that this is a, a very worthwhile exercise and in fact the identification and management of risk is really the prime, a prime task of governance. Um, I hope that it doesn't just get tucked away for <coughs> six months and in fact I believe this spreadsheet, um, it would be a good idea for it to be laminated and be pinned on the wall of every senior manager in this organisation and probably um, one for each of us as well. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? If not, I'll put the motion. The motion, by the way, should have at the end of it approves number three, uh, I understand, approves the risk mitigation approach to each of the ten risks as set out and amended at this meeting. Are you happy with that? 
Right. All those in favour, please. Yes. Reply. I'm sorry. <laughs> right of reply, Councillor Scott. Merely to say that I think that Councillor Dick supported my comments on our need to be more proactive, not only in identifying the risks, but understanding them and making sure that we are monitoring the, the progress on the mitigation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Carried.